Irene Dunn stars in Doctora in Mexico. On the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Better things that include DuPont rayon yarn, DuPont paints and varnishes, neoprene, DuPont synthetic rubber. The DuPont Cavalcade presents Irene Dunn as Dr. Catherine Neil Dale in the true story of a woman's adventure, Doctora in Mexico. They called me the Doctora. In Spanish, that means woman doctor. Not a doctor for females. Oh, no. Where I practice, it means a cure of ills ranging from tuberculosis through hookworm, love sickness, malnutrition, and malaria. For 40 years, I've been physician, surgeon, and psychiatrist to Mexicans and Mexican Indians. 40 years. Many times, I thought of giving it up, going back to the hospital in Philadelphia. There'd be work for me there. I'd be a human being who saved lives, not a foreign devil whose house you couldn't come into. Oh, yes, I had it all figured out, but just then an Indian baby would be dying of pneumonia somewhere in the mountains. Two days on mule back. No time to think. Or a case of leprosy would break out in the next village. Or, and this happened most often, I just quietly remember that day a long time ago when I made up my mind to be a doctor. It was in South Carolina in 1891, and I was 19 years old. I can still see the three of us. I was sitting in the garden with Papa and my brother George. Well, Katie? Yes, Papa? Have you thought about what you'll do after graduation? She'll get married and have babies. That's what every sensible woman does. <laughs> now that you mention it, George, seems to me I've seen quite a good deal of a certain young fellow lately. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> His name, Papa, is Jim Dale, and you know it perfectly well. <laughs> I understand he's going to be a missionary. Now, tell me, sir, do missionaries marry? Oh, some of them do. We've had quite a few right in the family. And if Katie falls in love with him and he falls in love with Katie... George? Yes, Katie? If you and Papa are all through living my life for me, there's something I'd like to say. By all means, Katie. By all means. Papa, George, I want to be a doctor. A what? A doctor. Like you, Papa, and you, George. A female doctor? Good grief, it's unbelievable. Why, why there's never been one before. Oh, of course there has. There's Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell and her sister, Dr. Emily. You mean to tell me you've never heard of Dr. Mary Putnam Jacoby? I'm proud to say I have not. Who are their patients, horses? Oh, Papa, really? This is the 19th century. You sound like we're living back in the dark ages. Well, all I know is a woman can be either of two things. A wife and mother or a dehumanized machine with a career? I'd like to have children someday. And you someday. can't be a doctor, Katie. And I'd like to be a doctor. Then you can't be a wife and a mother. You must make a choice. You can't be both. Papa, George, I think I'm going to try to be both. <laughs> But Papa helped me to become a doctor all the same. He knew it was a hard road for a woman, but he knew it was my wish, so he saw me through. He sent me to Philadelphia to medical school, and he helped me to get my appointment with the mission board for a post in Mexico. I knew this meant saying goodbye to Jim Dale. It was a hard decision, but I made it and went on living. And that, I thought, was that. I was assigned to a little town in the interior called Stuardard del Maiz, the city of corn. I'll never forget my first patient there. She was a mestiza, half Mexican, half Indian, and she was very much afraid. You are the doctora? Yes. Won't you sit down here, please? No. Stand. Very well. What's your name? I must tell. Well, that's not exactly necessary. Bueno, no tell. What's your trouble? Where are you sick? Doctor, he's very hot. Then all of a sudden, he's very cold. Hot, cold, hot, cold, doctor. He's very sick all over. I see. Uh, Tell me, did you do anything for it? Did you take any medicine? Go to herb woman. Oh, the herb woman. What did she say? She say, me under spell. Oh. And what did she tell you to do about it? 
sleep in sun on wooden board. Make powder, hot peppers, dried ants, and grasshoppers. Mm. Rub on body. This I do, Doctor, I do. And now is feeble worse. Yes, you've certainly got a fever. Oh. All right. Here now, just hold this under your tongue. Oh, and no, I... no, no, uh, no. Oh, all right, all right. Oh. If you don't like the thermometer, you don't have oh. to have it. See, I'm putting it away in the drawer. Oh. There. No more thermometer. <laughs> now, you're not afraid anymore, are you? I'm not going to you mustn't cry. I'm going to help you. Here now, I want you to swallow this capsule. Here's some water. Is, is magic? No, it's not magic. It's quinine. You've got malaria. Quinine is better than hot pepper and grasshoppers? Yes, very much. And you can tell the herb woman I said so. Not that I want to go into competition with her, of course. Now, look, you take six every day. Six. You understand? Don't forget. Gracias, doctor. And if you wish to know my name... No, 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 no. Don't tell me. Come back in two weeks. Then if you feel you can trust me, then you tell me your name. later, just as I sat down to breakfast, there was a knock on the door. It was the same woman. Uh, doctora, is Doña Pancha, Doctor? Oh, Doña <laughs> Pancha. Well, I'm glad to see you again. Come in. How do you feel now? Doctora, is no more sick. Is feeling very good. Oh, now, here, here, here. Stop kissing my hand. Let me look at you. Well, you look fine. Fever all gone? All gone, Doctor. He's very good, quite nine. He's better than grasshoppers. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. Yeah? Doctor. He's got no money in my house. Oh, I'm sorry. He's very poor. I know. Well, 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 wait just a minute. I can't give you much. I don't have much myself. Oh, no. Doctor, no understand. Today, I'm strong again. Yes, but you said you need money. No. I go out on the street, beg for some tacos. See, all this money I get for you. Oh, no, why I can't. Take it, Doctor. And next week, I bring even more. No, I don't want the money, Doña Pancha. No. No. No, thank you, Doña Pancha. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, that's very touching. I'm happy to have made you well. That's all the pay I want. Oh. oh. Uh, uh, Doctor. Yes. Then let me work in your house. Cook, clean. I work hard for you. I'm very good cook. Well, I'm sure you are, but... And uh, where you go, I go. And I do everything for you. Uh, I even get special charm to keep sickness away from you, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, all right, Dona Pancha. You can stay. <laughs> but for the sickness, I'll make my own charms. And that was Doña Pancha. After that, whenever I felt discouraged or hopelessly confused by the strange behavior of Mexican Indians, I'd look over at Pancha sterilizing the forceps or telling a frightened Indian mother not to be afraid, and for some reason I was always reassured. The first year I had 800 patients. It was a good beginning, and it was a good life, even though I was very lonely. <laughs> but things had a way of happening in Mexico, unexpected things. Almost miraculous things. Like that day just before Thanksgiving when I heard a knock on my door. Come in. Katie. Jim. Jim Dale. Oh, Katie, I almost didn't believe you'd be here. Well, come in, Jim. Oh, however did you get here? You're the last person I the ever... The last person? Well, I never dreamed I'd see you here. No, it wasn't so difficult. Boat, train, and a day and a half on the back of a mule. <laughs> Frankly, I never thought I'd live through it. Well, but... I... Why have you come down here? To work as a tourist? Or... I have an assignment here. To see you at Adel Maiz. Oh. But, uh, that's not why I came, Katie. No? Not the main reason. Oh, what is the main reason? Katie, I came down to marry you. Oh. Oh. Well, sit down, Jim. It's dangerous for a young woman to live alone in a place like this, Katie. It's the middle of nowhere. You need protection. Protection? I hate to think of the things that could happen to you. These half-civilized people. Why, 
Why, some I've even seen make me a little nervous. I'm afraid, boy. Oh, that's nonsense, Jim. These so-called half-civilized people, as you call them, treat me with the greatest respect. Yes, but the men... The men admire my skill as a doctor. There's a woman I don't even exist for them. I can hardly believe that, Katie. Is that why you want to marry me? To protect me? It's one of the reasons. But not the big one. I'm in love with you, Katie. I guess I always have been. Didn't it make any difference that we said goodbye, Jim? No. I found you can't turn it on and off that way. I tried, but it didn't work. I know, Jim. And Katie, I'm a missionary. You're a missionary doctor. If we were married, we could work together. Jim, someday I'll marry. I know that. I, I do want children. Who will you marry? An Indian? <laughs> well, of course not. You seem to think that all the natives have on their minds is to stand around ogling me. Oh, I didn't mean that exactly, Katie, but... Oh, I tell you, Jim, I'm a doctor to them, not a woman. <laughs> Just a minute. Senor Garcia, is uh, anything the matter? Uh, si, senorita dottora. Is everything the matter? Your daughter? No, he's not my daughter. He's me. Oh, well, come in, please. Senor Dale, senor Garcia. Your humble servant, senor. Oh, if you will excuse me. No, 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 please. Senor Dale, you, you are a friend of senorita dottora? A very old friend, senor. Ah, si, bueno. Then it is my wish you honor me by remaining here. Certainly, sir. Gracias, senor. Well, now, don't you think I have something to say about this? This is my consulting room, you know. Ah, senorita doctora, after you have listened to the nature of this illness, you will be glad. Really? I, I, I may walk up and down as I speak, uh, with your permission. Certainly. Ah, gracias. I, I am very nervous. <clears throat> uh, senorita doctora, this illness which afflicts me is very strange. I, I have examined myself. Is the head? No. Is the arm, the legs, the body? No. I ask myself, what then is left? The answer, it come to me, is the heart. Why? I ask myself, who is this woman who makes me feel young again so I cannot eat, I cannot sleep? And quick comes back the answer. <laughs> Senorita Dottora, I do myself the honor to ask your hand in marriage. Oh, oh, my. Uh, my wife, she is long dead. I have fine house, many pigs, 11 grandchildren, and two cows. All this I lay at your feet. Well, thank you, Senor Garcia, but... But, well, you see... You see, I... Oh, Jim, help me. I understand it all now, Katie. It's just as you said. To them, you're only a doctor, not a woman. They admire you only for your... But, Jim, tell him... That... Very well, Katie. But I'll do this in my own way. Is that all right? Yes, anyway, but just do it. Senor Garcia. The Senorita Doctora has much pleasure in your kind offer. Ah, then he's a step, eh? Well, there is, unfortunately, one drawback. The Senorita Doctora is already engaged to me. Uh, is, uh, is true, Senorita? I, I guess it is, Senor. And I have an idea. We're going to be married right away. <laughs> After Jim and I were married, we left Ciudad del Maiz and opened a mission school and hospital in the town of Rio Verde. Again, there was the usual show of fear and superstition. Again, there were the enemies, the witch doctors and herb women who resented the thousands of patients that flocked to my office. And this time, I made enemies among the doctors of the town, too. One Dr. Lopez paid me a visit in the hospital one day. Can I do something for you, doctor? Yes, doctora. You can answer for me one question. Yes? Why do you come to Mexico? Why? Because I like it here. <laughs> of course. Everyone likes Mexico. But why do you come as a doctor? Because doctors are needed in Mexico. They are not enough. Not enough? Who says this? Well, now, Dr. Lopez, you know there are thousands dying every year here who could be saved with proper medical treatment. Ah. You say the doctors of Mexico are no good? I didn't say that, doctor. You're putting words into my mouth. I think the doctors here are very good, but they're too few. <laughs> and you will make so much difference? Dr. Lopez, why are you asking me these questions? Have I interfered with your practice? Have I taken one patient away from you? Oh, my patients would not come here. They would have no faith in a doctor whose charge is a loaf of bread or a bag of onions or a dozen eggs. Uh-oh. The practice of medicine is a profession of dignity, Senora. 
How can you expect dignity if... <laughs> if I give it away free? Exactly. These peons who are your patients, they, they laugh at you behind your back. I've heard them. Senora Doctora, I have one thing more to say. Leave Rio Verde. Leave Mexico. Forget these peons. Leave them to their herb women and witch doctors. Go home, Senora. Thank you for your advice, Dr. Lopez. But I think I will stay. <laughs> then be careful. Do not make any mistakes. I will be careful, Senor. One mistake, Doctor. Just one little medical mistake. <laughs> I will be watching. <laughs> listening to Irene Dunn, Dr. Catherine Neal Dale and Doctora in Mexico on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As we continue with Act Two of this true adventure of the woman doctor's struggle to bring medical help to the people of Mexico, there is uneasiness in the minds of the peons. Who is this woman with her strange ways? There are threats, misunderstandings, and suspicions. Yes, I was uneasy for a long time, but nothing happened. I made no mistake. I was very busy, and soon the threats of Dr. Lopez faded from my mind. Then one night, while Jim and I slept... <laughs> Jim! Jim, what was that? Sounded like the window. I'll get up. Well, wait, I'll, I'll light a lamp. Sounded like somebody threw a rock. There, now, can you see? Oh, yes, that's better. There's glass all over the floor. Oh, here. What is it, Jim? It is a rock. Is there paper around it? Uh, yes, it's, it's a note. It's somebody's idea of a joke, I guess. What does it say, Jim? Oh, I, I can't quite make it out. It's in Spanish. Well, here, let me see. No, let's wait until morning. It's not important. No, give it to me, Jim. Well, it's nothing, Katie. Oh, please. Hmm. Leave here at once, or the blood of your family will flow in the street. You cannot escape. A man has been paid to kill you. Oh, Jim. You're not afraid, Katie? Oh, no. No, of course not. If you're not... It doesn't mean anything. Let's go back to sleep. All right, dear. Jim. What's that you're putting under your pillow? Jim, dear, what are you doing with a gun? Oh, I've had it a long time, Katie. Well, I've never seen it before. Well, there's so much unrest lately, I... I ordered it from the States. A missionary with a gun. Oh, I'll never have to use it. Jim, you are afraid. Yes, we were both afraid, but we stayed on. We had our work, and Mexico was our home. We did go back to South Carolina that one summer so Papa could see his grandchildren. But we came back. And then we moved to the real Indian country in the hills, to a sleepy Aztec village that had a name that sounded to us like Thomas and Charlie. And it was there it happened. A 17-year-old girl named Antonia was sick. Now, Antonia, this is your medicine. Here, the directions are on the bottle. Can you read, muchacha? Yes, you, doctor. All right, then read it to me. What does it say? Can, throat, in glass of water. Right. Ten drops in a glass of water. Ten drops today and ten tomorrow. It will take away your stomachache. Oh, gracias, doctor. I can go to cover you just now. Oh, no, no, no. Not today, I'm afraid. The merry-go-round will have to wait. Ay, doctor, I mean, those caballitos are here for today only. Today is fiesta. Oh, well, I'm sorry, dear. I, I know what the fiesta means. My one will be there, todo. Yes, I know, but you're not well, Antonia, and the medicine takes time. Now run along, come back tomorrow, and tell me how you feel. Wonderful, Jim. That's time for a fiesta. I was sure someone would have a baby at the last minute. <laughs> well, this time they'll have to have it without your help, Katie. You deserve a little fun. What's in that booth, dear? Give me one. Oh, it's a cockpit, Katie. Fighting roosters. Isn't it? Oh, no, I don't think I like that. Let's go over to the merry-go-round. I haven't... Oh, there it is. Listen. 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 Listen.
They're dancing over there toward the plaza. Yes, I heard that Lola was going to dance. Well, look, it is Lola. She's dancing on the brim of a sombrero. Oh, she is wonderful, Jim. Yes, she's the best in the village. Oh, look. Wonderful. It's Louie. Enjoying yourself? Good. I love this. Katie. Someone's calling you. Doctor. It's Fernando. Antonio's father? No, oh, Senor Doctor. Murderer. Fernando, what is it? What are you talking about? The doctor, she is a murderer, assassin. Why you kill my daughter? Well, I saw her only an hour ago. I gave her some medicine. Yes, you gave her some medicine. You gave her poison. And now she is dead. Dio mio. Why you kill her? Why? Don't talk nonsense, Fernando. Senor Fernando, I gave her good medicine. Ten drops of it couldn't kill anybody. Ten drops. Ten drops. Kill my body down. She take whole tablespoon. She what? Tablespoon. She wanted to go for yesterday. And so she say if ten drops be good, whole tablespoon be better. Oh, Jim. Now, Katie, it'll be all right. Where is she, Fernando? At your hospital, senor. And you, doctor, you are here to celebrate any fiesta. And my daughter, she oh, is... Oh, Jim, time. Jim, come on. Let's hurry. I've got to get there in time. <laughs> Hardly any pulse, no heartbeat, no reflexes. Oh. She's dying, Katie. Oh, no, she can't be. Madre mia. She just can't be. But it's no use, Katie. I have to get you out of here. That crowd. Get me out of here, Jim. It's dangerous, Katie. Forget I'm a doctor, dear. As long as I can do anything. But you've washed out her stomach, given artificial respiration. Oh, it's no use, Katie. You can tell by her reflexes. Still, I can't leave as long as... What's that, Jim? They're singing for the dead. You... You kill her. She no live now. Tell them. Tell them she isn't dead. I'll keep working with her. But I know you need. Fernando, you must let me work. There's a little while she be done. Who are you? I am Dr. Gonzalez. You've come to help? I have come to take over the case, senor. The girl is dying, no? Madre mia. You've come to take over the case? Yes, senor doctor. And this event has been a long time in happening. What do you mean, senor? For many years, this lady masquerades as doctor in my country. Masquerade? But now you are unmasked. You have killed the girl through your ignorance. I have killed no one. She is not dead. And she won't die. Step out of my way, senor. I warn you, senor. And I warn you, senor. This is my patient. She came to me of her own accord, and I can save her life. No one is going to stop me from doing my duty as a doctor. As a doctor, senora. When you are through here... If you are lucky, you will be put in jail. If you are unlucky, well, you've heard that mob out there. They will be here. If you are unlucky as a doctor, I must do what I can for Antonio. If you were any kind of a doctor, you'd want to do the same. As you wish, senor. Jim, help me. Yes, Katie. Here, hold back her arms. I'm going to try and force air into her lungs. to go on the merry-go-round. Si, mucho. Si, mucho. But you're going to be all right now. Signora Doctora, I... I don't know what to say. Say nothing to me, Doctor. But I think you'd better tell the crowd that followed us from the fiesta. Si, Senor. Si, Senor. Oh, Jim. I, I was frightened. But it's all right now. They're going back to the fiesta. Senor Fernando. Si, senor. Antonio should rest here for a while. You can take her home this evening. Si, senor. Gracias. Uh, uh, doctor, until now, I don't believe... Believe what? That what they say is true. That you have magic, mucho magic. No, not magic, Fernando. Knowledge. Uh, I don't understand, senor. For hundreds of years, people have studied and learned... So that I could save your daughter. Yes, Doctor. And after me, others will study and learn much more. More than you learn, Doctor? Yes, Fernando. All there is to learn. Until someday, no one will have to suffer.
thanks to you, Irene Dunn, and to all members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade cast. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will bring you a tender story of teenage love in springtime. It's the story of a city boy who learned from a country girl how the war can be fought on a farm. Our stars will be two of Hollywood's ablest young actors, Virginia Widler and Skippy Holmeyer. Be with us next week to hear Weapon 4-H, starring Virginia Widler and Skippy Holmeyer on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Ambruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Arthur Arendt and was based on the book Doctora in Mexico by Olive Floyd, published by G.P. Putnam and Son. This is Frank Graham inviting you to listen next Monday night to Weapon 4-H, starring Virginia Widler and Skippy Holmeyer on the Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.